Well, this is slightly intimidating. <laughs> Just slightly. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, we're going to organize you. Can we go back a little further? Mm -hmm. Can I have my friend Joy over here? Yeah, please? you're more than welcome to. Joy, come here. <laughs> I might need to hold your hand. Joy, you can stay on the side over here, Joy. I'll be over there if I don't have to. That's okay. bogus. Is that okay? That's perfect, thank you. All right, guys, I'll need your help. Make sure we get the microphones no. in the right place that you can all hear. So. You want to go on the side or in front of her? That's good. Is that close enough so we don't get too much in the shot? Can you check, 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 one, two. Hi, my name's Laura Hunter. Can you spell your uh, first and last name for us, Laura? My first name is Laura, L-A-U-R-A, -A, and my last name is Hunter, H-U-N-T-E-R. So what I thought we'd do is, Laura, if you could kind of give a brief synopsis um, for a minute or two and explain okay. what happened to you in right. the flood, and then we'll look at the questions. It's here. pretty emotional, so I'll do my best to get through it. But I was in my cottage, and it's a really small cottage. Um, I would say the living room is about the size of this room. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, water starts pouring into my living room window. and Quickly, real quickly. I had no time to gather anything, not my pets or anything. So I went out the front door and I was going to cross the street to the high ground. And um, as I was doing that, I got washed away and underwater and um, flailing. And I ended up on the other side of the street. Close, to, There's a Baptist church on the other side of the street, close to that church. And it was another, another raging, you know, like creek or whatever going along the ridge, the higher ridge there. So I finally get up, you know, I finally am able to breathe, and um, I'm approaching this tree, and the tree is probably maybe this big. And so um, I thought, I'm going to grab that tree, and then I'm going to pull myself out. And so that's exactly what I did. I straddled that tree, pulled myself out, flung myself onto the ridge, um, to the embankment, and then proceeded to just crawl up to higher ground. And, no, and then I noticed that my, I'm walking on a broken leg and a broken foot as I'm crawling up there. Thank, thankfully, the water was really, really cold. So I'm sure and all the adrenaline prevented um, me from feeling, you know, any pain. So I survived. And then um, it wasn't until the next day Then I found out that my cottage totally is gone. It's just a slab there. And, um, you know, my, my cats, my cats, when they get scared, they hide in a drawer underneath my bed. And so that's probably what they did. So anyway, I lost everything. That's basically it. But I survived, and I'm so happy I survived. And I never really thought, um, I never really thought of dying, that I was going to die. I just thought, okay, how am I going to get out of this, you know? So that's what I did. And, but I'm here, and yay, and nice meeting you all. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I've uh, been speaking with one of your neighbors today, and he had mentioned something about a person perhaps finding some of your belongings in your wallet. Yeah, it's a fantastic story. I was thinking, you know, oh my gosh, it's going to be so hard to replace, you know, IDs and, you know, cards and bank cards and et cetera. And then I thought, I told myself, no, Laura, just think it's going to be easy. Just think it'll be easy. And then um, my mom received a phone call from, my mom was in California, and she received a phone call from a, a chaplain a volunteer firefighter. And um, he told her that um, he had my, that someone had given me, uh, someone had given him the backpack and that my, my ID and everything and my bank cards and everything were intact in there. And so he um, brought it to me yesterday with his wife and um, presented me with a brand new backpack and some toiletries and um, a wallet with some money in it. And, um, and then of course all my IDs and stuff too. So that was just, you know, such a blessing. And, um, and then also my other item 
I was watching the news and I was like, that's my bicycle on all that, on all that rubble. And um, my friend salvaged it for me and, um, you know, has it, has it for me. So, and apparently it wasn't too dead and stuff. <laughs> uh, and what, what was going through your mind when you, that first moment that you were watching the movie? Um, like I said, I think, well, I, sc I was screaming. <laughs> Um, I guess that wasn't going through my mind, it was going through my mouth. <laughs> but um, literally, um, okay, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to survive this. I don't think I once thought, oh, sh shoot, this is the end. I was just like, okay, how am I going to get out of this? And thank God for that tree <laughs> that I was swiftly approaching. And the, the waters apparently were flowing at 30 miles an hour. So, yes. I noticed there that you're holding on to a notepad. What have you been writing down? Well, this is just a notepad of um, all my contacts because I oh. lost my phone. And then I thought, well, if any, you know, if I need to write anything down from you or any information, I could do that as well. Laura, can you describe how massive that flood was and what it was like seeing that much water or being under that much water? Well, I used to body surf. I'd love to body surf. So it's like when you're catching a wave, but not the good kind of wave. You're catching the kind of wave that goes up like that and it slams you down. And then you're stuck under there for a long time and you're hoping that you're gonna pop up soon so you can breathe. That's how it was. Are you gonna stay in Manitou? I'm not sure. I um, have family in California, my mom and my brother, who, who, I, who I haven't seen for quite a while. And, um, I have a lot of support in Manitou and a lot of beautiful friends in Manitou and um, this is a clean slate so I'm going to go back to California and, and hug, hug my mom and my brother and, and then we'll just go from there. So there's another flood, flood warning right now. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely wouldn't move back on Canyon Avenue. <laughs> what, what sort of damage, if any, did you sustain from the first uh, flooding? Uh, on Canyon, and, and why did you like to stay, knowing perhaps the, that something like this might happen again? Well, the first flooding, though it was awful and it destroyed my friend Joy's house, who's hiding back there. <laughs> um, but the coal, it didn't do a lot of damage to my cottage. The, my cottage was right next to that culvert, the flood zone. If I jumped out of my living room window, I would jump right into the culvert. So, but, um, and then the second flooding, it just came down the culvert and, and it was working fine. And so I just thought that the culvert was doing its job now. And I thought that perhaps all the debris that came down initially, um, the, then all the worst of it may be over. I really, really, really never, never in my life would have anticipated that. And my cottage was um, concrete. It was on a concrete slab, and um, and I think the concrete built up too a little bit around it. And so I thought, oh shoot, you know, there's no way it's going to take my cottage up. Did Did you um, rent? Yes. And did you live alone? I lived with my two cats. No. Okay. Well, is there anything more you can say about the support and the love that you've received since this all happened, and what's that? What that has felt like? The main, the main thing was, I mean, the chaplain and his wife bringing the backpack back to me, and the, you know, the kindness from strangers. You know, he comes down and he says, "Oh, I got a new friend." You know, and I was just like, "Wow, that is so fantastic!" And they. They um, said, you know, after you heal, we should all get together and have coffee and, and talk. And, you know, so that's been fantastic. And then, you know, other people that, you know, I know from the neighborhood and stuff, you know, they've all rallied around and called me and come to visit me. And, but, you know, the kindness from strangers is so fantastic. Laura, you told me earlier about the neighbors that rescued you and the first responders. Tell the group a little bit about that, about that few minutes. Okay, there. yeah, so so I'm way up on the ridge. You know, I kept climbing, and I knew that I knew it was broken, but it didn't hurt. But I kept climbing because I didn't know how high the waters would get. And it was still torrential. I could just see the river down there, and it was really, really loud. 
And so I was just up there, you know, screaming, you know, help me, help me. And eventually my neighbors made their way up, probably after the water receded, because it recedes pretty fast, I guess. And then, so they came up and um, drenched my eyes, because my eyes were all full of mud, and, um, and uh, called the paramedics, called the fire department, and um, they had to come up come up quite a ways and get me and put me in those skips. Is that what they might be called? A skid or whatever, you know? And then I was kind of scared. I was like, please don't drop me back into the river, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so they brought me down and and I I didn't realize I didn't realize how I didn't realize how bad it was because when they brought me down to the street, uh, we kept walking and walking, walking. And I thought, "Whoa, I shouldn't be able to be right here." And then I looked around, and there's just the street is full of boulders and debris, and you know. So they did a fantastic job. What is your situation in terms of insurance, renters' insurance, health insurance? Uh, being able to afford all this? And well, I I didn't have renters' insurance, and um, um, the one thing that is is totally helpful is I have VA benefits, so I'm able to get, you know, my physical needs, uh, physical Lord care Lord. taken by them. And then all the wonderful care that I've gotten here at Penrose. Everybody's been so fantastic. You're, you're a veteran? Yes. <clears throat> what uh, branch was I was in the Army. When? It was from 86 to 88. I didn't see any combat, so, but I was in, in Signal Corps. I did kind of working in a computer room, did stuff like that, stationed in Germany. Or did you know that there was an intense search going on for you? And when were you made aware of it? Well, see, think? actually, that's the that's where um, the the confusion comes in, because though I used a tree to get out of the water, there's also there was also this petite blonde, which I'm not a petite blonde, <laughs> and she was hanging from a tree near um, the creek, a different creek. And so they, I don't think they've found her yet. So. Laura, um, one of your neighbors managed to capture this whole episode on video. Um, I was wondering if you've seen this. I haven't seen it. Would you like to? I have it queued up here. It shows your house and the whole flood. And Does it show me going away? No. No, oh. it showed the house, though. Yeah. I don't want to traumatize you, but it um, you know, would be interesting to see your reaction to this. <laughs> I've, um, I've, I've seen... I've seen quite a bit already. And more, anything more you can say about your long-term plans and where you're going to be going and where exactly you're going to be living? I'm still um, trying to find a place to, when I get out of the hospital, to go to recuperate. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that. And um, my long-term goals are just to be really grateful for my life. And I want to form really, really, really healthy relationships. And, you know, that's the most important thing to me now. Um, everything I lost, you know, I, I can all be replaced. But um, at this point in my life, um, I just really would treasure a lot of friends and a lot of support and a lot of laughs and, you know, having good times. Can we ask your age? and 49. Ever, ever married? Any kids or anything like that? I've never been married, and I want to get married, and I'm single, so I'll just let her know. <laughs> <laughs> you did have, you had two, two cats. Like, I did. Like your kids. I did, yes. How old absolutely. Were your they were like my kids. How old were your kids? Absolutely, they were like my kids. And they were so special, you know, and they weren't, they weren't just, you know, like scenery around my house. They, you know, we interacted a lot. And so, yeah. Thank you. Um, Sally and Wiggles. How long did you live on Canyon Avenue? I lived on Canyon Avenue um, for about eight years. And what is your occupation like? Well, I'm on disability. So. Could you kind of describe your injuries? Sure. I got a, a broken, I got a small broken bone in my um, foot. And then the fibula, is that how you say it, fibula? I've got a hairline crack in it. And, and luckily, <laughs> blessedly, 
um, even after traversing that terrain, it stayed in alignment, so I won't need surgery on it or anything. Is that and, just from like boulders and logs hitting it, or do you know what, um, what caused it? I'm really, yeah, in all the turmoil and everything, I don't, I can't pinpoint when it exactly happened, but I did totally notice it when I was, I was it was moving weird when I was walking up that, when I was crawling up the, the um, ravine or ridge or whatever you call it. So, Laura? Yeah. <laughs> um, how did you survive? You talked about body surfing. Was it that? Was it a will to survive? It must. It must. You know. It. I didn't even question that I wasn't going to survive. I just was saying, how am I going to get out of this? So, and I ride a bike a lot. I'm strong, and um, and I know that I have that going for me. Absolutely, and. Um, you know, good swimmer. <laughs> so. In the eight years you lived on Canyon, um, had you ever anticipated this kind of hazard? I mean, so, yeah, had you ever seen anything like and this I've before? I've never seen anything like this before, and I never anticipated this. And after the Waldo Canyon fire last year that has triggered all of this, um, I would have people coming around my cottage saying, ooh, it's going to flood. And I used to have a deck that would go over that culvert that they built. And um, they said, oh, yeah, when it floods, it's going to take the whole deck down the street. And I just, I thought, oh, that's silly. But, but it's true, it did. In the, first flood, in the first flood, it was sprinkling a little bit, and I just got on my bike to ride down to the store. And then when I was right downtown, and then when I was walking back up, it was a river down the street, and and I walked past my my wooden deck. It was quite a ways down the street. This is so the first one. Yeah, so it did take out that deck, and then after that, I just it, even though it took out the deck, it didn't really come. It didn't come into the yard really. You know, it kind of just take, took down the deck and pushed it that way. But this time, it just inundated the whole area up there. And the water went wherever the water wanted to go. <laughs> when, when was the first flood war? Joy, July 1st. Yeah. So Joy is your close friend? Joy's a really good friend of mine. And Joy had a house um, uh, that she had only lived in for four years that she bought. And it was, in, it was ground zero for her. Beautiful two-story yellow house. And it was close to the underpass up Canyon Avenue further. And it was crazy. It, it was full of logs and debris and up six feet high. And so. Did you think about moving after, after that happened in her house? I didn't because um, I still felt like, I thought, oh, well, you know, that's probably the worst of it. And so. Is there anything else that you would want people to know at all? Um, when people say and warn you about a flood, don't just go, aw, you're silly. <laughs> you know, definitely take them seriously. The hospital tell you when you might get out of here? I might get out of here tomorrow. Yeah. Do you want to go back up there mm -hmm. after things are clear to check things out? I would. Call it good guys. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you.